just like every artist is, I was that kid as well. Like I've been always drawing in my childhood and then I always wanted to tell my own story visually. So that's when I decided to actually go to the fine arts school. So in my college, I didn't do animation from the beginning. I did fine art first, like focusing a lot on oil painting and still image works. And then even while focusing on those type of art forms, I want to actually explain something visually in narrative format. So that's when I realized that animation is that because I love drawing and animation um, has that film language type of you know, format within. So that's when I actually really, really ca started carving out my career to become the animator and filmmaker in animation, right? And then I went to the States where I studied a little more about film and animation at UCLA. And after that, I made tons of films over there, really enjoyed every moment over there. And then after that, I was fortunate enough to join Pixar Animation Studios. And I spent there about seven years as an animator. And even at Pixar, while working on like amazing award-winning films like Inside Out or Finding Dory, on top of that, I constantly made my own short indie films as well. Yeah, that's how I've been doing and that's who I am as an artist. And until I really made a huge decision to leave Pixar and join this small company called Tonko House, where I started directing my own commercial short films and TV series. Yeah. One of the many um, of, of good things that's really happening nowadays is actually um, online world. So before, like even a decade ago or maybe a couple of years ago, it wasn't really like these days where you just have limited capacity, opportunity to actually, you know, showcase your work out there. But these days, it is so convenient. You can use Instagram, Facebook, your own personal blog or website to showcase your work. And that actually really works. So I think that's one of the good things about, you know, um, about these days and how it is really influencing us artists, you know. And then... That actually helps me out as well. So I, when I need to actually communicate with people out there, I still remember myself only going, th going to film festivals to really meet the audience. But these days, we can just put up your stuff and you can just start getting immediate you know, replies and comments and reviews on your work. And then I think that's something you know, that's really fascinating about these days in the, the industry. Yeah. yeah. There's so many things. First of all, even before talking about specific artists, like the world you are living in, it's already a huge inspiring um, the circumstance, the everyday life that just inspires me. But if I look back, if I have to pick few, definitely Miyazaki Hayao song or um, Disney animation, that has been my childhood themselves. So whenever, even these days, when I, whenever I feel like lost or whenever I feel like I'm in a slump, I do actually go back to old classic Ghibli movies to get uh, inspiration back and find my old way back to uh, my filmmaking method and approach, yeah. I can actually talk a little more about where I am at right now as an artist. Of course, every single step you meet certain, you know, wall and then there's always moment of your life you have to actually break through that wall, right? You know, it just comes to you every once in a while. And these days, what I'm going through is actually the writing part of it. Because, you know, as I described myself previously, I mean, coming from a visual artist, like animator or drawer, painter, that's who I am, like naturally, right? But like, as I learn deeper and deeper about this film language, I start to understand how important the writing part is. So. Um, it's like almost like a, you're another weapon. For example, like painting, drawing skill is like your sword. And then, and then you've got another weapon called gun, right? And it's almost like the same idea. I'm so used to actually expressing this with this shield and, and a sword. But now I'm learning how to do it with my gun. So I'm not used to this. I've never actually used this before. So that's one of the biggest struggles I'm really having these days. But at the same time, Struggling doesn't mean that it's negative, it's really positive because that really makes me stay more sharp and more awakened all the time and more alive because, oh, this is the, my weak point. I, I enjoy this moment of learning and expanding my territory, right? And I only know that it's going to help for me to become a better artist and better painter or even a writer, whoever you call, you know, yeah.
the life at Pixar is a huge part of who I am as an artist. And like seven years is a long time. It's not just a few days. It's just seven years is like a big chunk of your life, right? Um, I think the biggest thing I learned at Pixar is how to communicate and collaborate with amazing talented people. There are so many different types of people there and different types of artists who approach things so differently. Being able to understand every single one of the people over there and then being able to actually express yourself without really compromising, um, that's actually something I learned the most at Pixar. Of course, I learned like how to animate. I learned how to actually draw over there. I mean, it's, I was being surrounded by so many talented artists, but I see if I need to actually pick one thing that I learned the most at Pixar, I can actually say that it's, it's really communication.